You are a photographer and want to get into astrophotography. The first big obstacle will be auto guiding, improving the tracking of the mount to accomplish long exposures. Let me show you how to get your auto guiding running and your images to the next level. My name is Tim and this is Astroedit. The first question you probably have is What is auto guiding exactly? Do we really need it? The purpose of auto guiding is to accomplish longer exposures in astrophotography. When people are progressing in this hobby, the focal length and exposure time increase. This will work until your mount can't give you the precision you need. If the tracking of your mount is not good enough, if the focal length is too big and the exposure is too long, the stars in the image will trail, even with tracking. And these bad images are ready for the recycle bin. We need to improve the tracking of the mount to accomplish really long exposures. For example, with my telescope in Skywatcher mount, I can expose for a maximum of 2 minutes before the stars trail. If I go above 2 minutes, every other image will be wasted due to backlash and tracking errors. But I once reached a stunning 10 minute exposure with this same equipment and it was perfect. You don't need a better mount, you need auto guiding. What do we need to get this process running? We need a motorized tracking mount that has either a computer connection or an ST4 input. We need a PC running preferably Windows. We need a guide scope that can mount on the back of the main telescope. And at last we need a guide camera that will go with the guide scope. Finding these products online should not be hard. I will leave my current equipment in the description below to get you started. And now to the interesting part. How does it work? The idea behind the process is as easy as it is genius. If you hook up the guide camera to the PC and focus the guide scope, you will of course see the stars of the night. These stars should not move, since the mount is tracking the main scope and the guide scope. But what if we see these stars moving? That's a tracking error, which we now can see and erase. Let's work on the setup. There are two ways to get this running. The first method is easy, but error prone. The second is more complicated, but it can improve your images in even other ways than just good guiding. Method 1. The connection between the mount, the PC and the guide camera will be established by two cables. The camera will come with an ST4 and a USB cable. The ST4 will connect the camera with the mount and the USB with the PC. The software will now receive data from the camera, calculate a correction, send it back and the camera will send it to the mount. Speaking of software, time to introduce the star of the show. As a beginner you want something easy, straightforward and most important, free. A software where you just have to press one button and it's working. The developers of this one had the same thoughts and named their invention accordingly. Push here dummy, PhD 2. Free to download for Windows and macOS. After installation, connect your equipment. In this case, the USB cable of the guide camera. Be careful, some cameras need their drivers installed before the first connection. PhD will walk you through with the first time wizard. First, select your guide camera from the list. You need to enter its pixel size and the focal length of the guide scope. Most cameras don't support binning, so leave it at 1. Since we are using method 1 and talk to the mount through the camera, choose on camera. The mount guide speed refers to the calibration before guiding and can be set to 0.5. With method 1 you will not have an aux mount connection, leave it at none. At this point even PhD will tell you that this method sucks. Choose no adaptive optics and save the profile with a name. You will have to build a dark library for the camera at the first setup, just follow the instructions. If you ever run into problems with guiding or the connection, running the wizard again solves most of them. Now the process that you have to go through every night when setting up. And since I didn't have a clear night in I think a month, I have to do that in here, just to show you. And I will grab some footage from older videos just to make it more understandable. Connect the equipment. First the cables, then the software. Loop exposures and focus the guide scope. You can use different tools to make this simpler. If you can't find any stars, play with the distance of the guide cam in the focus tube. Finish the rest of the setup for the main camera and scope and return to PHD right before you want to start imaging the object. Use the auto select star button and press the guide button. This will start a calibration process that will take about 3 minutes. As soon as that's done, you are guiding. The graph that displays the accuracy will be shown and you can start imaging. Tips to improve the overall guiding accuracy at the end of the video. 
But remember, the first method is easy, but it doesn't work that well. Why? The PC has no direct connection to the mount, no pointing information, no dithering, and you need to recalibrate every time when you salute to another object. Let's improve this method by exchanging only one cable and tons of software. Sadly, this method is only available on computerized go-to mounts. The idea behind this method, the PC has a direct connection to the mount. You will be able to move it with a click of a button and PHD does not need the ST4 cable to send guide information. The most challenging obstacle, find a cable that connects the controller from the mount with the PC. In my case, I had to buy an adapter to connect the phone cord-like cable that came with the mount. That's all the hardware. The software takes a bit more getting used to. First, you need to know about ASCOM. It's a set of drivers that connects all type of equipment in this hobby. Every manufacturer of mounts, cameras, focusers and so on basically include the support in their drivers. Download the latest ASCOM version from their website and, if available, the ASCOM driver of your desired piece of equipment. In this case, the mount. I have a Skywatcher HEQ5, so I need the ASCOM Platform 6 and the Skywatcher ASCOM drivers from their website. Links down below. Install all of those, work your way through ASCOM and get back to PHD. Create a new profile with the wizard, but this time we won't choose on camera, but Skywatcher telescope, in my case. And you are done. Now PHD will know where the telescope is pointing, won't need to calibrate as often, will consider a meridian flip and the guiding will be spot on. I also said that this direct connection will improve your images in other ways than just good guiding. First, you can jump into plate solving, a process to find your target with just a click of a button, without a star alignment. Very handy to have and it will speed up the setup a lot, giving you more time imaging. Second, you can now use dithering, a process that will minimize a certain type of noise in the final image. Absolutely necessary, if you want a clean background and a good image. At last, how do we get the guiding even better? How do we get the graph smoother? Align the guide scope with the main telescope to choose a guide star within the field of view of the imaging camera. Work on your polar alignment and balancing of the rig. These are the two biggest factors that will throw off guiding and the two biggest factors you can improve. Make sure the guide scope is in focus. Use the tools to analyze the sharpness. Use a guide exposure time of 2 to 3 seconds, never only 1 second. Otherwise you will chase the seeing of the star and not its movement. Play with the settings in the bottom of the screen, mainly the aggressiveness on the axes. It can depend on your mount, but sometimes the guide commands can be too strong, which will result in an oscillation. Basically the mount will just wave. I did not forget your questions from the last post I made, so let's go through them. Where is the best position in the sky to calibrate PHD? Calibrate right on a target, it can't get any better. Does the position of the guide scope relative to the main scope matter? Yes it does, it's not that big of a deal, but if you can align them, do it. How big and bright should the guide star be? Just use the auto select feature, it's not about the brightness, it's about the full width half maximum, the sharpness of the star. Should I use an infrared pass filter to improve the seeing? You really don't need to. The stars are good as they are, and if you use a monochrome camera, even better. What are the best settings for PHD2 for guiding? You have to test that out on your own. Every mount is different, and every mount needs different settings. How can I improve my guiding to get longer exposures, like 5 or 10 minutes? There have been some other questions, but I hope all of them are answered with this video. But if you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If you want to dive even deeper, watch my videos about plate solving and dithering. There has been no clear night since the last video, which is now over a month ago. But I really hope that next week will improve. I really hope. Until then, my name is Tim, I am an astro addict, I wish you clear skies, and may the night be with us.